We'd like to welcome you back to the Candidates Forum for the Omaha Tribal Council elections. My name is Ed Zendejas and once again this is being brought to you as a service of the University of Nebraska at Omaha, specifically MAV Radio and the Native Studies Department at University of Nebraska Omaha. The Candidates Forum is being moderated by Taylor Keene and we will have the second half of that uh, forum with you right now. We would like to remind uh, the audience that we are streaming live now. We'd like to thank our assistant here who's able to get that worked out. So I told candidates they got to bring their A game because we're going live right now. So we'll turn it over to you, Mr. Moderator. All right, thank you, uh, Professor Zendejas. Uh, good evening. Once again, my name is Taylor Keene. I'm serving as the moderator uh, this evening with our Candidates Forum. I'm a uh, professor at Creighton University in the College of Business. We're continuing with the topic of constitutional uh, reform, but the next area of focus is going to be on tribal membership. Now, overall, uh, why this is so important for all tribes and um, important for the Omaha Nation is that, truly mathematically speaking, if we leave the quarter blood quantum there, <coughs> based on just natural rates of intermarriage, we will not be a tribe in less than 50 years. So you see many, many tribes dealing with this issue of, of blood quantums. The questions that were put forth here in front of me is talk about these, these different options. Which of the following do you support? Keeping the one quarter blood quantum, which as I mentioned mathematically is not going to lead for a viable nation. Dropping it down to one eighth or third going to an option of lineal descent. You may ask yourself, what is lineal descent? We would pick a period in time when we felt that our membership roles were pretty solid. Uh, most of the tribes do them based off the, the Dawes Commission roles. The reason they use those roles is the Dawes Commission was the commission that was established to determine who was going to be put on an allotment. And almost without exception, the federal government found every single person and put them on those roles. So an example of lineal descent would be uh, the uh, Cherokee Nation, my other <coughs> tribe, and lineal uh, descent basically says you find those ancestors on that Dawes roll, and anyone who is a descendant of them can be a citizen. Uh, what did that do for the population of the Cherokee Nation? There's pros and cons if you go by lineal descent. One would obviously, anyone who's under a quarter, uh, perhaps those situations come because of intermarriage with other tribes. I've got a nephew, he's three quarters Indian just like me, but he's from 12 different tribes. And the only one he could get registered is under the Cherokees. So longer term in the future, lineal descent provides a, a solution that would keep us viable as a tribe. The, the cons are obviously there's going to be a lot more people in, in the tribe. And uh, candidly speaking, it's going to lower the amount of Indian blood. On the pro side for the quarter blood quantum, I would say that it maintains our bloodlines for sure. But just by natural <coughs> intermarriages, etc., it lowers our potential base. So we'll, we'll begin once again on the left with uh, Mr. LeCount. And the question is which of these options, if any, do you support and why? It's my understanding that the um, tribe used to be lineal descent until the 1961 rule for the Indian Claims Commission payments that were made. And then that's when the quarter blood quantum requirement was changed. I think that this is an issue that has to come from the community. I mean, I, I, I would support whatever the people wanted as in the process of consensus building through constitutional reform because I think that there's a lot of sides to this issue and that every one of them has validity. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Caillou, please. I guess I've been I've been in discussions about this, you know, previously, and a lot of the things that Taylor was telling us, you know, we wouldn't be a tribe in 50 years. I thought it was a little longer than that, but that sounds even. You know, just we need to be a tribe. We need to, you know. Be, we need to be a people because 
a lot of us are growing up with beliefs, our Omaha beliefs, and those, I don't know if those would survive either. But as far as my support, I, I you know, I, I would support like Carlton or whatever the people decide, but my preference would be the lineal descent. I mean, I read somewhere where um, 5, 000, we have 5,000, uh, five to 6,000 tribal members now and you know, 3,000 don't even live with us. And you know, so there's only 2,000 to 2,500 living on the reservation. And you know, I. <coughs> One minute. Oh, time. Time, sorry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Candidate Kaye. Ms. Parker, on behalf of Candidate Porter, please. <clears throat> Gwen Porter supports the lineal descent for enrollment primarily for the fact that her profession is working with Indian child welfare <coughs> and she sees that there is a significant number of families that have children that we consider as our children or Umaha children that do not meet the one-fourth blood quantum and she sees that determining blood quantum is no different than dogs and horses that we are categorized with under the federal government wildlife and parks. Thank you, Ms. Parker, on behalf of Canada Porter. Mr. Chairman, please. Um, at this time, I would um, uh, support the stay at the uh, border blood in, uh, enrollment. This time, do we, in behalf of the, uh, the 1961 Roma Act, was, there was some assessment that was done, and there is still a lot of um, uh, unfinished business that, has, that needs to be done by uh, uh, at the time, it was consulted to uh, <coughs> Mr. Paul Brero, and there is still some, and uh, still a little bit more action needs to take place because it will, it will run into the lineal descendant, allowing them to be part of the Omaha tribe. So uh, I'm in support of the quarter, quarter blood staying the same, and then also allowing lineal, at, you know, after the, set, the full assessment is done. Councilman Miller, please. I would support uh, lower in the blood quantum. We won't need because to me it's uh, in a racial marriage. Uh, and down the road we need to change it again. I would change to the descendant because of the lack of blood that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, the next question is still under the realms of constitutional reform, and the topic is around tribal membership. Uh, the, I'm sorry, forgive me, around tribal voting, forgive me. Uh, the question is, do you support allowing all tribal members the right to vote in tribal elections? Why or why not? And to give some background uh, to this question, essentially these numbers have been, been brought up. I know that whenever uh, I was nominated uh, for a position in Blackbird Bend Corporation. I looked at the enrollment for the tribe that is based on the tribe's count versus those who live on and off. And that number is even uh, greater than what I had expected to see. Uh, essentially, uh, less than 15% of all tribal citizens from Omaha Nation live on the reservation, meaning 85% live off. So that's 85% of the citizen base, which includes myself, uh, we, we do not have the right to vote. And so the comments back uh, for the candidates and the questions here are, do you support allowing all tribal members to vote in tribal elections? Why or why not? Mr. LeCount. I do support allowing all tribal members the right to vote, but I think that part of the issue has to do with the um, tribal government presently serving as a resource distribution body under the federal government, under the IRA, because there's only so much that can go around, and I think in that process people get pushed out looking for work, you know, looking for opportunities elsewhere. And I think that part of this, the reform process has to change the direction of the tribe to be able to allow 
growth and development on the reservation to bring people back. Thank you. Thank you, candidate LeCount. Candidate Caillou, please. <laughs> I guess at this time I would probably support, you know, the full tribe voting. You know, uh, we need to. It would bring some of our brightest people home. I think you know, <coughs> we would. You know, some of these problems we're talking about: economic development, constitutional reform, everything. There's people out there that can help us with this that are our own. And if they had the opportunity to vote. Know, make a better life for everybody. We could all, you know, work. I mean, look at the percentages we're getting. Who lives where, you know? Here in, on the res, we're just a small percentage of who we are. Thank you, Candidate Caillou. Ms. Parker, on behalf of Candidate Porter, please. <clears throat> Gwen stated that voting for all tribal members comes from the people in turn of the um, constitutional reform. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Mr. Chairman, please. <clears throat> uh, I do support the allowing the uh, tribal members off the reservation to, to vote only <coughs> until there is a strategic strategic plan that's going to be able to provide you know, <laughs> the structure to uphold the, the structure for all those uh, tribal members that do live off the reservation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Miller, please. I would uh, say no to um, that, you know, uh, all tribal members vote at this time until we become sufficiently self-sufficient financially, then I would agree to because we would have more at stake. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. The next question is the, the final question as it relates to constitu constitutional reform and it's the, the extension beyond uh, membership and voting and it goes directly to Tribal Council eligibility. The question is very simple. Do you support eliminating the reservation residency requirement for tribal members to run for tribal council? Why or why not? Candidate LeCount. I do support eliminating the reservation residency requirement, but because I think that all the people have to be considered and they all need a voice, and I believe that on um, um, The tribal government, as it currently is, and I hate to, you know, keep going back to this point, but it serves to be a resource distribution body, but that does not necessarily encompass all the people and all the interests of the people, or even like a traditional government sense of the people. Thank you. Thank you, Canada. Canada, call you, please. As far as um, candidate eligibility, we're already doing that. We've already done it. And, you know, I think ratifying it or, you know, getting it taken care of in the Constitution, you know, we wouldn't, they wouldn't have to come back to go to the election committee to get nominated. I think we would have to break it up into districts because we would have a lot of candidates. You know, we have a lot of candidates, I mean, tribal members living in Omaha and Lincoln. And I mean, all over. I got brothers living in Maine, Arkansas, and, you know, in Arizona. So, you know, I just think that's something that I would support, but, you know, that would take a lot of planning to do that because of our population out there. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Caillou. Ms. Parker, on behalf of Candidate Porter, please. Mm -hmm. 
Gwen Porter said to refer back to the constitutional reform. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Mr. Chairman, please. I do support our the uh, removing the residency uh, duly because of I am a, a victim of uh, the micromanagement that was done by the tribal council to not allow me to be <coughs> the council for two years, and duly to the tribal council still has the authority to, to authorize you know the uh, voters list. You know, so I I I do agree to that we do do away with it. And then also uh, uh, until, until we do do away with it, I, I believe that the planning committee should be allowed to develop that strategic you know, um, language and amendment to the Constitution until that point. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Miller, please. I would support uh, waiving the <clears throat> waiving the uh, resident requirement if they move back to the reservation. Serving on a tribal council is a 24-hour job. Need to be easily accessible to our members. <coughs> Thank you. All right, that is the uh, last of the topics around constitutional uh, reform. Might add just a couple of comments. You know, historically. The Oman Nation, our, our treaty boundaries extended uh, along the Missouri River uh, all the way from the South Dakota border down to Bellevue. As a matter of fact, if uh, anyone has a relationship with uh, Bellevue uh, University, that was a land grant provided by Omaha Nation to them. And uh, so anything between here and uh, down south in Bellevue, Bellevue is our old historical land. This reservation that we're on, we never actually even camped here. This was not a primary area. This is where the federal government put us. They gave us that constitution as well. So before we go on to the next question, I want to urge everyone, power for constitutional reform resides with the people. It resides with you. You need to urge members of the council, if you want to see it, to do it yourself. You know, we have to do it on our own. Um, we could put forth a public referendum to ask uh, our leaders to do it. It's going to change the balance of power. In my opinion, there's nothing to be lost by constitutional reform. I thank the candidates for their comments on that. We'll go into uh, the next topic. is around uh, tradition, language, and culture. We all know that uh, our ways are what keeps us together as a tribe. And in my opinion, it's the responsibility of the government, of the Omaha Nation, as a, as a body politic to support the language and our traditions and our and our customs. So the question is pretty broad here. Uh, what do you do? Propose to maintain and strengthen the tradition, language, and culture of the tribe. So again, we'll start over on the left with Canada account. <clears throat> I believe that um, speaking your own language is an act of sovereignty, and that um, it's a political act, not just cultural. And that there's a lot of there's people that have said that there's people in Congress and in the federal government that are waiting for the day that tribes don't have their languages until they can no longer claim to be a divergent people from the mainstream. And so I am fully supportive of all programs dealing with language and culture, and also the Native American Church and people that, you know, are, are run ceremonies on the reservation. But I also um, believe that the uh, tribal code should include a provision dealing with uh, cultural and intellectual property rights so that, and there should be an internal review board uh, process for any research proposals that are s submitted to the tribe to be done here to protect the tribe's cultural and intellectual property. And thank you. Thank you, Kenneth LeCount. Kenneth Caillou, please. Okay. You know, I've, I think, you know, our language, our culture, and some of our traditions, you know, they're, they're in good hands. They're in really good hands. <coughs> you know, I, the language, we've got a language department up here. We've got a language department at the high school, or the, the whole school. 
I hear some of the small kids, you know, saying Omaha words, which really, you know, surprises me. And, you know, and I know it comes from, you know, but my sister Vida runs a very good program there. You know, over the years, my um, parents were consultants there. Now my sister is working there, you know, and, and it's, I think it's in very good hands. You know, the program here is in very good hands with, you know, my health. Some of the other, you know, the traditions and the, the culture, you know, the power of the Native American church, you know, I, especially the church, I see it in really good hands. You know, all the roadmen, you know, Rodney. One minute. Here, you know, and it's, you know, I, could, I can't see us losing that. Can't see us losing it, you know, look at all the people that travel all over the country to go to these, go to powwows and you know, I'm, I'm a two powwow guy. I go to Winnebago and Macy, <laughs> but you know, that's, um, sometimes I don't even go to Winnebago, but again, I think everything there is in good hands and all we need to do is support, support it when it comes, you know, time for our, to voice our opinions on it. So, thank you. Thank you, Candidate Caillou. Ms. Parker, on behalf of Candidate Ford, please. <clears throat> Gwen Porter proposes a total immersion to strengthen the tradition language culture of our tribe. Thank you, Ms. Parker, on behalf of Candidate Porter. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, please. I uh, support to continue the um, collaboration with the, the, the tribe and the educational institutions to continue the, the cultural, traditional aspect as well as, you know, creating the opportunity <coughs> so that uh, those that are not in the, the educational process there as well to as well as our learning, our health facility to come by the opportunity to understand a little bit more of our tradition, cultural aspect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council Miller, please. <coughs> to maintain and strengthen our culture, language, <coughs> tradition, we would have to be, uh, collaborate with the elders, but they are our teachers. And to collaborate with the school, to start with our young ones, especially with the Head Start students. And I'd also like to uh, apologize earlier too in, in regards to this, uh, the language. Uh, I'm very lax with our language. And I know when I said uh, my clan name didn't come out right, so I'm gonna offer my apology. I'm part of the Thunder Clan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, one, Okay, just one last comment uh, on, on the language. Uh, there's a list of the number of fluent speakers that we have left. My mom's one of those teachers, and uh, blessed that I can speak what I can of her language, but we're, I'm certainly not fluent. Last time I looked at that list, see, three years ago, there was uh, 20 left. Last time I looked, it was 12. So, uh, it's going to be real hard to revive a language. Uh, it's a lot easier while we still have them here, but it's, uh, again, it's up to you, the people, to try to learn and to practice and to speak as much as you can. Even if you make mistakes, you know, you got to try. That's the only way that uh, you can learn. But even the little words, you know, even if we're just teasing each other or whatever it might be, we, it's so important for us to maintain our language. Okay, that's the last of the structured questions. We're going to give each of the candidates five minutes to uh, address any other issues that they may have overlooked or other portions of their platform. <coughs> Mr. McCann. If you want to choose to take questions from the audience, you may do that as well, candidates. I would just like to say that sovereignty is invested in the people, not in the um, tribal government and that I believe that tribal administrative capacity needs to be strengthened 
because I think that there's a vacuum that's created because of structural deficiencies that destroys the capacity of the tribe to be able to provide the adequate services that the people deserve and also that to be able to um, exercise the full extent of our sovereignty. And, um, and like I said earlier, I believe that these are all structural issues. These don't have to do with anybody in particular or any family in particular. And I, I in fact, believe that a lot of the politics of those things are a form of internal oppression, and that it hurts the tribe, and that it keeps people from working together, and it leaves the tribe vulnerable and exploitable by outside interests. And if anybody has any questions, According to your paper, you you agree on um, separation of legislation and judicial powers. The executive branch would be a public office, so would be the, uh, the legislative branch. And the judicial powers, in your opinion, would the chief of police, the tribal chief judge, the tribal prosecutor, the tribal courts of clerks, the clerk of courts, would that be a public office also to be, to be um, decided by the Omaha people? I believe that that would be a possibility, either that or they could be appointed by the council, but on term limits that are different than the council's terms. But the process for removing them would be uh, a lot more complex than that. But I, I think that um, having like a, a public office election by the people for the prosecutor, the judge, and the chief of police would be a good idea. Anybody else? Ask now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> You're all going to go home and say, dang, I should ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you. All right, we got oh. I guess I, I, I'm, I'm kind of new to all this. I, I just want to ask if you could explain the uh, internal oppression. I need to understand what that is. <clears throat> it's the um, basically instead of being oppressed by other entities like say the federal government that it's done by the people themselves to each other through the mechanisms of, of government that exist now and, you know a lot of the rivalry a lot of the, the issues that exist I think are structurally created by the Constitution and by the lack of separation of powers that exists in it and by the inability of it to promote tribal, administrative, <coughs> legal, and governmental capacity that's going to serve everybody. And by capacity, I mean, you know, policies and procedures, I mean, <coughs> you know, operating mechanisms of administration and government, like rulemaking. Thank you, Kenneth. Can I tell you? I guess, like I said earlier, you know, we I will talk about the voting, not just in the tribal election, but all the other elections coming up for president, you know, the school board, county supervisors, you know, every, anything, anything within our county, we should go vote for those too. I mean, it's great. We all show up for the tribal election, but those are important too. Last I, the last, that statistic I got was that including the Winnebago and ourselves, we're 54% of the population here in Thurston County. <coughs> we should have, the, you know, if everybody goes to vote, we should have the sheriff and, you know, maybe even a judge over there. So, you know, I, you know I, I urge everybody to go vote, pass the word, you know, get together with a group and go vote. That, you know, that's the only thing that I have that I want to, you know, close with. But, you know, if anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Caillou. Ms. Parker, would you like to make any, any final comments or are you going to yield to the chairman? Any final comments? Great. Quoting from Gwen. 
It's obvious when I look around to see things taking place that it's unethical. I have learned that we lack structure, we lack dreams, we lack a vision for our future, and we lack unity. I have heard the words equality and fairness throughout my adult years and living on the Omaha reservation all my life, but have yet to witness it in action. I see the unfairness and the inequality provided by the imbalance of power and control of our leadership. Change comes from the willing. I am not proclaiming to have all the answers or solutions to the challenges that we are faced with daily as a nation. With your support, I will seek the answers or solutions to our daily challenges for the betterment of our people's livelihood, self-sufficiency, and pride. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker, on behalf of Candidate Porter. Mr. Chairman, please. Um, I, I'd like to also add to the platform line is that to look at uh, <coughs> utilizing and uh, strengthening the, uh, all of the planning process to create the opportunity so that you know, all of the aspects within the government body and as well as the tribal programs and as well as you know the, the 501c3, uh, that they all have you know, opportunity to work together, create the opportunity for jobs, create the opportunity to restructure and reorganize you know, the one ink um, uh, corporation so that uh, there's an opportunity for that you know, we can create them the opportunities for job opportunities as well as educational opportunities. And then also the other arm of the economic development plan to allow to work with the Lucky 77 to create the, I believe that we're not utilizing and uh, maximizing the opportunity to utilize, you know, the, the class two gaming facility to allow revenue to help, you know, the unmet need and the needy of our relatives here that are resided here in the community and as well as create opportunities through that for <coughs> our senior citizens, you know, look at uh, giving them the opportunity to create, you know, uh, give them the opportunity to utilize and maximize some of their, their dollars of their, 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 uh, their income that they're, um, they, they have a income that is uh, uh, not um, allowing them to, to do the things, you know, for, for their own needs, you know, their health care, Maybe they want to increase their health care. The tribes can utilize that revenue to create that opportunity for them. Today we have the change within Medicare and Medicaid that's going to be an impact to our senior citizens. And as well as one of the things that uh, the biggest concern within any country is is the taxation. Taxation is going to be a, uh, a problem here for you know general assistance from the tribal council. Uh, the, 1099s is going to be issued. Those are some of the things that we got to look at. Those that are being that have been given general assistance, you know, within this next year, you possibly may be uh, taxed through that through 1099s. And does that create opportunity, or does that create problems for your your qualifications for getting, you know, any SSI, <coughs> your retirement, you know? So this is part of the platform you're allowing to to create that opportunity to uh, subsidize, offset some of that cost, you know, for the future. So Any questions? You being the current chairperson or chairman, is there a possibility of absentee ballots for our relatives in Sioux City, Omaha, and Lincoln? Yes, there is, and that, and that there is uh, goals within the numerated power of each of, you, of your tribal members, uh, creating the opportunity of secretary election to create that opportunity. Does that mean for people living in Bancroft, available? Off the reservation, yes. And one last thing that I would like to share with your, uh, the community relatives is that uh, I believe that I would also like to take the opportunity to utilize you know, the Constitution, as well the tribal constitution, the state constitution, and the federal constitution to do a public forum to allow each and every one of you tribal members to understand your rights, you know, how the intergovernmental uh, process uh, operates. Thank you. 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 Class three, I believe that we've established, you know, the opportunity here and maximizing you know, and in compliance with the NIGC to create that opportunity. 
as you know, building the uh, the structure and barriers so that uh, tribal council is not involved in, in the day-to-day -day operations, allowing the the uh, commission board to operate and, and fulfill that on the class three site, and as well as they we also have the the uh, oversight over the class two, uh, and also, but I believe that uh, the class two is uh, kind of the stepchild at this point in time. Uh, I'd like to see that if there's an opportunity to create that, that strategic plan that's going to be able to allow the uh, <coughs> class two to maximize, you know, the, their, the, the opportunity for the reservation. Uh, class two has uh, the opportunity of non-taxation taxation in, the, in the state of Nebraska, so I think that's an opportunity. And that it, I believe that if we structure it properly, that class two could overcome the class three here Time. on the Nebraska side. So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Finally, Council Miller, please. <clears throat> One thing I'd like to um, propose uh, serving on the Tribal Council, the main thing we need to do is work as one <clears throat> to represent our people agree to disagree and let's keep moving forward. Um, like I said, we have, I'm proud of the WIC building that's, um, that hasn't been, we haven't had a new building in town here for about five years and that's something um, I'm proud of. But that, it goes along with working with the rest of the tribal council. My main objective is to have a working council that will work together to better serve our people. Other ideas I'd like to propose is collaboration our program needs to collaborate more all together, not be separate islands. Um, with collaboration, we could be providing better services to our people, better services to you. Another proposal I'd like to have is empowering our directors, letting them know that you have a position, you have the opportunity to make the right decision in your program to, to provide a better service. <coughs> Another one would be a proposal I, I'd like to present to the council if we elected is training. We need more training for our council to understand our programs, the ins and outs of what we're getting into, the money that we're responsible for. That's, um, I'd like to really push. Uh, the main, main thing I'd like to do is to get better audits, to eventually have a clean audit with no findings. Right now we have audits that are adverse, unqualified. In my position as a treasurer, there's more training out there for each and every one of us. In closing, I'd like to uh, say thank you to each of the candidates one, once again. Thank you for providing the ideas, the objectives you like to see for our people. <clears throat> it's a tough job. When I first got in there, I didn't realize what a, what situation I'd be running into. But working as one, as a, as a council, we could achieve a lot. We started it, let's continue. We have a long ways to go. Our relatives are here on the street is comments is that why can't we be like the tribe, our relatives up north here? That's how we need to really think about the direction we're going. Um, <clears throat> but last of all, I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of the good relatives for coming here and showing the interest, showing, showing your voice along with the relative Orville here, I do too, I do too um, push that you get out and show your voice on a national level. Um, we need to have um, Obama back in there if we want to survive. But with that, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a state senator that's supposed to be representing us in District 16 now. What's your stand as far as <coughs> collaborating with him on some of uh, 
big issue. Uh, we have Pender that's always a thorn on our side, and the state seems to support them more than they would us. So we stand on that issue. I'd like to see um, a better collaboration with the tribe and with our, all of our state representatives. One I'd, like, I'd like to see one day, too, as one of our tribal members be on a state level. We had <coughs> capable individuals here, here on our homeland here that, that's very capable of coming up, being a leader and voicing our opinions. So I, I'd like to see that, to, to improve collaboration and working together with the state. Uh, education. This has been talked about here in training, you know, uh, for uh, what you said about the, the tribal council there. You know. I, was, I was wondering, you know, the programs, you know, have, have people that, you know, where I want to go with this is that there's probably certain programs that have people that do qualify but aren't certified, you know, and uh, probably have that experience. I was asking to see if uh, you might. All right, we're all Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if you just uh, ask your question real quick, and then we'll give him 30 <laughs> seconds to answer it. <laughs> How about just, you know, getting training for those, like, you know, for individuals who have been around the program? certain people, like they'll go for you know, get text and stuff to be certified. That's, um, that, like that. To answer that, that would be uh, the directors, empowering the directors to look at the individuals that are participating in their program and empowering you to just pushing you that, towards that direction. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, we're, question. we're out of time, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. But we, did the uh, the uh, candidates are going to stay. Please feel free to, to visit. Uh, as moderator, I, I wanted to say uh, thank you to each each of the candidates uh, and your and your campaigns for for showing up here, uh, for taking this this uh, forum seriously, which is in the end is for you, the Omaha people. Uh, and thank you very much for for coming and, and supporting us. Uh, this was kind of a grassroots effort. You know, today everything's on the internet, and Marissa started this. And it kind of took a life of its own. So thank you to you, Marissa, and to my brother Ed. Turn it back over to you. I think you need to close your show, right? I'd like to thank you for coming out. Uh, this took some planning and effort, and uh, appreciate the turnout. We appreciate the candidates for coming and participating in, in this. And we hope uh, it's been streaming the last hour, and it's going to be posted on uh, YouTube, and we'll be able to post it on. Uh, on the Facebook Omaha Tribe uh, site, and there's going to be some other places. If you ask your relatives where it's at, we'll be posting it on some websites as well. And hopefully that'll be done uh, sometime in the morning, so they'll give you a chance to tell your relatives uh, where to look and uh, check out uh, the candidates if you'd like. But once again, this was brought to you as a service by uh, the University of Nebraska at Omaha and uh, part of our community outreach, and appreciate. Uh, my employer, the Omaha University of Nebraska Omaha, for allowing us to, to do this. Uh, I, I would just like to say there's been some talk about education and improving training. One of the things that we will be doing at uh, University of Nebraska Omaha with our Native Studies program is putting our minor bachelor's degree and within the near future a master's degree in liberal arts with the focus on Native American studies online. So that will give uh, people here an opportunity to uh, get that training and education that they would like in the areas of, uh, of uh, tribal sovereignty and other issues. So uh, put that shameless plug in for, for my university and my college. And uh, appreciate once again your time and effort and once again the candidates. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sean Gahoe. Without that Gahoe, they're selling uh, Indian burgers over there.